Hi everyone, Dennis Foley from Acoustic Fields. Today we're going to talk about barriers. What is a barrier? A barrier is a structure we build between a noise source, I'm going to use the word noise in this case, noise source and our ears, the receiver. We're in a studio right now, close to a street. Not too busy, but it could be, okay? So let's say we're going to do some real critical recording in here. Right now we're doing videos, which is great. But let's say we were doing some real critical listening and recording and maybe mastering. And we had a lot of garbage trucks, big industrial semi trucks and stuff on the road. We would have to build a barrier between the road noise and us. Okay, how do we do that? Most of the construction we see today in our commercial buildings is not designed to inhibit noise or to reduce the transmission of noise. There's a lot of variables that go into it, but mainly it's cost and it's size and all of these other variables. And sound kind of gets pushed to the side, so to speak. So when we're dealing with barriers, when we're dealing with noise, the first thing that we have to do is quantify and qualify the amount of noise that we're going to have to deal with. If we're going to build a structure to stop something, we have to know what we're stopping. We have to know how powerful it is, what frequencies it's at, and, and all of those variables, what time of day it occurs. That's why we have that seven day noise time study that you can use your iPhone and measure with and, and send us the numbers and we can help you with the barrier design. So the big thing about noise, it's not like music and voice. It's really full range and it's very, very powerful. So what we have to do is we have to design a structure that's very powerful like that. So we have to deal with the noise as a, as a power element, so to speak, and then go from there. So I'm not going to get into the details of barrier design because it's too complicated. But one thing I do want to say is that it's frequency and amplitude dependent, meaning the lower the frequency, the more dense the materials we're going to have to use, the thicker the wall is going to have to be. My favorite is poured concrete, not cost effective. I get it but it's a very good dense barrier. We just built a structure two months ago, 80 inch poured concrete wall with a half inch steel plate on the outside. Now, why do we do that? Well, because our noise measurements indicated very low 30, 40, 50 cycle energy at 90 dB SPL. So it was really loud, a lot of low frequency. So when you're dealing with lots of energy and it's low frequency energy that you have to stop, I want you to think about a bagel, okay? A bagel has a hard kind of crust on the outside in the roll part. And then inside, it's cream cheese, it's ham, it's blocks, it's whatever material you put it. So we have a real hard crust outside and then a softer material inside. And that's kind of how barrier technology works for low frequency. So we had the concrete wall with the steel plate. The steel plate was obviously the most dense over the concrete, I think it's four to one. So we stop the low frequency energy with the most dense material on the outside of the wall. And then we work our way in. So our goal is to minimize the power with the first layer. And then we're, gonna re we're not gonna get it all because no structure is 100% you know, uh, functional. So we wanna then add a series of materials as the measurements indicate. So I think the wall ended up being about 14 inches thick when we were done. But we did it. We got it down to a level. Like I always say, there's no such thing as soundproofing. But we got it down to a level that the usage in which the client was going to use the room for was satisfactory. And he was very happy. So he could work in there seven days a week because we did measurements over seven days. And you have to do it if you're going to be working in the room because you want to measure for the worst case and plan for the best case okay so i hope this helps just remember that when we're dealing with noise we have to build a barrier and it's not just any barrier the barrier has to be directly related to the frequency and amplitude of the noise thank you thank you for watching this video and if you liked it please give us a thumbs up we also have a newsletter that you can subscribe to so please do that because we offer special price discounts to only those on our newsletter and then don't forget about our forum. We have started a forum on our own website where people ask questions and I usually get a chance every couple days to look at it. There's an interchange between people on the forum 
and we'll give you real answers uh, on a regular basis, so that'll help you. Thank you.